Hello everyone, this is Ryan King and welcome to week one of my Sculpt January 2021 time-lapse videos. Uh, so I'm going to be doing four of these on my channel, four of these videos. I'm just going to be doing one each week and I'm going to show you the time-lapse videos of my Sculpt January uh, sculpting practice. So if you haven't heard about Sculpt January, it's a really fun art challenge. It was created by Zach from CG Boost. Um, I'll leave a link to the website, the Sculpt January website. You can check it out. Basically, it's an art challenge. It's sort of like Inktober, if you've heard about Inktober. Sculpt January is where you have a calendar, and what you do is you sculpt one thing each day, and you can sculpt it with Blender, ZBrush. You could even do traditional clay if you want to. And um, so on this calendar that they provide, there are different prompts or words and you can use those words to get an idea for what you want to sculpt. Because, you know, if you're just going to sculpt one thing each day, it may actually be hard to figure out what you want to sculpt if you can sculpt anything you want. So the prompts are really good in that they provide you with some idea of what to make, but you still have a lot of choices of what you want to make. So you can see that here on day one, the prompt was dragon's egg. So I decided to sculpt this like kind of cartoon dragon and he's kind of like sitting in this little cracked egg. And uh, yeah, Sculpt January is really good for improving your sculpting skills because after the entire month of January, you've sculpted 31 different sculpts. So every day you sculpt one sculpt, that way you just get in a lot of practice and over the month, you have a lot more practice in and hopefully your sculpts have improved. Um, so this is the fourth year that I'm doing Sculpt January. Uh, the first year was 2018. So I've done it 2018, 2019, 2020, and then 2021 this year. So yeah, this is my fourth year of doing Sculpt January. So yeah, it's really fun. I, uh, I, I do look forward to doing it every January. Uh, so now that I've talked about that, I should probably talk a bit about the time lapses. So I just started with uh, the meta balls for this I actually started with meta balls and I just made the basic shape of the dragon I cut it in half uh, with the knife tool which you probably saw at the beginning and then I mirrored it over and then that, that way it would be mirrored because with the meta balls you can't really add a mirror modifier so I converted the meta balls to a mesh and then added the mirror modifier and then that way the sculpt would be symmetrized so uh, so yeah, I got some reference images and threw them into PureF, which PureF is a super awesome uh, software where you can throw in a bunch of reference images. You can just grab reference images, you can drag and drop them from online, or you can also drag and drop them from your file browser if you have images downloaded, and you can just place them all around, and then I have a second monitor. I actually have a three monitor set up, but I have uh, another monitor that I can look at the references, and then I'm sculpting with my uh, drawing tablet. I, I decided that I wanted to go for a somewhat cartoony dragon. I like the expression that I gave, I, th I think it was pretty funny. And you can see that I was pulling out those fingers with the snake hook brush, and then I was thickening it up with the blob brush. Uh, and there we go, adding in some nostrils. I do like how this one turned out, I think it was pretty good. Um, all of the sculpts are going to be on my Sketchfab profile, so I'll leave a link in the description if you want to go and see uh, my sculpts on Sketchfab. If you don't know what Sketchfab is, Sketchfab is a really awesome website where you can uh, upload 3D models and then people can look at them in their browser. So you could even like look at 3D models on your phone. It's pretty cool. Uh, adding a sphere and just making the eyes and sticking them into the eye sockets and then also right at the end here I modeled a little tongue. And then you can see right here, here is uh, the final sculpt. I'll be showing you the final sculpts at the very end, and you can check out all of my sculpts on Sketchfab because I'm going to be uploading these all to Sketchfab. And day two. So the prompt for day two was freshly baked. So I decided to sculpt a big loaf of bread. Um, you can see I have the final render in the corner there. And what I do for that is I go into the workbench instead of Eevee or Cycles for the rendering engine, I go into workbench and then I go into rendered mode and then I can like add a shadow and add a map cap that I like and things like that. So that's why I've been doing the final renders. Uh, you can see just like adding in some different cracks in the bread and some different lumps, trying to make it look pretty organic. And then I also added like a, like a tabletop or something for the bread loaf to be sitting on. And then what I did here is I, I duplicated the bread and then I added this cube and then I added the boolean and that way I could cut pieces of the bread out and then I just stuck those pieces of the bread on the table or on the plate or whatever it is. And then I sculpted detail in the pieces of the bread to make it look more realistic. 
I was pretty happy with this one. I don't think I got the texture quite right, especially where the bread is cut. Um, but looking at reference photos, it does look like there's little holes in the bread, but maybe I should have gone more detailed. Yeah, so I added the little holes and then I like smoothed it out because I didn't want the holes to be that big. And then I like went around and added some, just some random kind of swirls and then smoothed that out. Just trying to get the texture of bread. I haven't really sculpted bread before, so it was good practice. I decided not to do any materials and just go with like mat caps and the workbench because doing materials and like adding shaders and textures and stuff that's going to take a lot longer and I'm already pretty busy making tutorials for my YouTube channel you know I make a lot of tutorials I'm always working on more tutorials so I didn't want to spend a ton of time doing materials and texturing the objects and also you know Sculpt January is mainly for improving your sculpting skills so I wanted to just work on the sculpting and really practice that and really focus on the sculpting so that's why I just have these like matte cap renders but yeah blender's workbench is really cool and you know in uh, blender 2.8 and forward the workbench is really cool how it has the shadow you can also add in your own matte caps and stuff and there we go so day two freshly baked I was pretty happy with this one All right, so day three. So the uh, the prompt for day three was modular limb. So I didn't really know what to do. I kind of looked online to see what other people were doing, and I just really couldn't figure out what to do. I, I prefer sculpting organic things over hard surface. I, if something is hard surface, I'd just rather box model it. I don't know. When it comes to sculpting, I'd much rather just sculpt a organic thing, like a face or a creature or something. But yeah, hard surface I do find hard to sculpt. So in the end, I just decided to sculpt a robot arm, which is what I saw a lot of other people doing, but I wanted to make mine look a little bit different. Uh, so yeah, I just uh, used the metal balls again, and then I actually kept the symmetry off because there wasn't really anything in this sculpt that was going to be symmetrized, and then just started to add the different sci-fi details, which again, I find those really hard to sculpt. I would just rather box model them, like the sci-fi details, but yeah, it was, uh, it was good practice. I think this one is one of the worst ones that I've done so far during Sculpt January this year. Um, and I did want to say, uh, let me know in the comments if you guys are doing Sculpt January. Just uh, You can just let me know in the comments. And also, if you upload your artwork somewhere, you can definitely send me a link to your sculpts, and I will definitely check them out if you want to send me a link to your progress as well. So yeah, I'm just like carving in details here, uh, trying to make it look sci-fi and cool. Um, this took way too long, though. And I had already been sculpting this for like an hour and then I was still like at the very beginning of it. So, and I didn't want it to take too long because again, I'm working a lot on making tutorials, so I don't have a ton of time. I do have, you know, a few hours to work on this, but, but I spend the rest of the day working on tutorials. So you can see here, I just uh, added a box and then, and I just added the Boolean modifier and just cut off the arm because I was like, okay, I don't have enough time. This was maybe like an hour into it. And I was just like, oh, I don't have enough time to sculpt all of this because, and it was already an hour and I just didn't have, you know, five hours to like just sculpt and sculpt and sculpt it. So I just cut off the arm and just had, I just made it look like there's a little piece. Maybe you could stick on a, a, an arm or a hand and then also cut off the shoulder area so that I so that it would be a little bit easier to sculpt I could sculpt it a little bit faster so I used the draw brush and then I turned it from dots I think is the default I turned it to line in the settings and that way I could just drag and then let go and then it would make uh, some lines so that way I could make little sci-fi details kind of carve in little crevices and stuff I could also carve in little panels and things like what you can see right there I think it was a pretty good method to quickly get in sci-fi details. And then with the line there, I just clicked, and that way the line just made one little dot, and then that way it just stuck uh, a little bolt in there. So that way I could make those little little dots that look like kind of like bolts. And then just uh, making like little sci-fi panels and things. Also making those arrows. I really like that. I think that made it look a lot more sci-fi, adding those arrows in there. And then just finishing it up, adding lots of detail, adding little bolts that where you could like, I don't know, stick this onto a robot or something. And there we go. So there it is for day three, modular limb. And again, these are all on Sketchfab. So if you want to check that out, I'll have my Sketchfab profile in the description. 
Okay, and day four, so the word for day four was sneaking insect. So I wasn't quite sure what to do, but then I decided to do a praying mantis. And I tried to make him look like he was sneaking a little bit. So I just started by modeling the head and then modeling those giant eyeballs. Again, getting reference photos. I always get reference photos because they are super helpful. And then adding in more details on the head, adding in some dots for the eyeballs. And then at the end, what I did is I actually posed him. So I actually added bones and then I stuck the bones in the character. And then I parented the bones with automatic weights. And that way it kind of just set up a basic rig and then I could just rotate the character. And I also used the pose brush a little bit to pose his hands and arms. Uh, but yeah, just kind of adding a little details here, little kind of wrinkles and stuff on his face. I tried to find some reference images of like praying mantises really close up so I could get as much detail as possible. Just adding in some more details on the mouth. Uh, on the reference photos around the mouth, they had little, little pointy things. So I tried to make that and adding those little blobby things on the, on the front there. They're almost like little cone things. And then I added a new object to make the arms. So I just like scaled those up and then I uh, Boolean them together. So I joined them together into one object, and then I also just kind of modeled, just box modeled the shape of the hands, kind of the claws. They kind of have claws almost. And then after I'd modeled that, added a subsurf, and then I boolean those together. So with the boolean with the boolean modifier, just boolean those shapes together, and then I could sculpt them. Also adding those little antennas on the top there. Um, so what I did is I added a skin modifier to make the antennas thick. And then you can see just sculpting those arms, kind of getting the shape for the arms. And then you can see I'm adding these little, little pokey areas right there on the arms. Uh, I just used the snake hook brush to pull out those little bumps there. And then you can see I added some bones and then I just went control P and parented them with automatic weight. So it just did some basic rigging, just set up a nice basic rig and then I just rotated it. All I need to do is rotate the character so that he was kind of looking over and looked kind of sneaky. So there we go, day four, sneaking insect. I was pretty happy with this one. I think this is one of the better ones so far. All right, and day five. So the word, uh, this was a fun one. So the word for day five was magic gate. Um, so you can see what I'm doing here. I'm kind of uh, making a little scene and then I'm actually making like a little character. So what I decided to do is make the uh, doors that lead into Moria, the mines of Moria in Lord of the Rings. So when, when the fellowship uh, comes to Moria and then Gandalf tries to open the door, uh, it says in Elvish, speak friend and enter on the door. And then that's how they get into the mines of Moria. And then, you know, Gandalf meets the Balrog and everything. So yeah, th uh, I, that's what I decided to do. I decided to kind of make this little scene. Uh, this one took quite a while. It took longer than my other ones, but I was happy with the finished result. So you can see I'm just uh, sculpting Gandalf's uh, cloak. I just made a little Gandalf character and then I made like the, the mountain edge or the wall where the door is. And it was pretty hard to sculpt the folds in the cloth. I found it quite difficult, but it was really good practice. I did try using the cloth brush, but I found that it didn't really work too well for this. Maybe it, I was a little too high detail uh, with the cloth brush. And then adding a belt, adding Gandalf's belt, and oh, I forgot to add the sword because he, he carries a sword. I forgot to uh, add that. I just realized. <laughs> um, yeah, making his little wizard hat and then adding in a face there. And then also uh, modeling his staff, his Gandalf the Grey staff. But when he becomes Gandalf the White, he gets a new staff. <laughs> so yeah, just sculpting his cloak there. And then I started with the face. So yeah, I just uh, added a sphere and then just started sculpting out the face, adding the jaw, adding where the eyes are in the nose and the mouth. I didn't actually look at any reference images of Gandalf. I, I should have done that. I should have gotten some reference images of his face, but I was trying to finish it pretty quickly because I was already take it had already taken a long time to make this, so I didn't want to spend too much time on it. And you know, if you're trying to get likeness in a face, that can you can just be sculpting for hours. So I was just like, okay, I just want to sculpt it and make it kind of look like Gandalf, but in the final render, you're not even going to see his face. Of course, on Sketchfab, you can zoom into his face. But yeah, I just uh, didn't want to go into too much detail. 
I can't really go into too much detail anywhere because, you know, you're doing one a day, so you can't really spend hours and hours and hours on it because you're just doing one a day. Adding in the eyes just with some spheres and then making the eye shape inside there and then adding a mirror modifier. Also uh, giving him his long hair and his beard, duplicated that little object there, kind of sculpted a beard coming down. So yeah, this one, this one was probably the longest. Uh, it took the longest of all of the days, but I was pretty happy with this. And then, yeah, I just added a cube there, and then I was uh, trying to sculpt a mountain. I was trying to make it look like stone or rock, and then just carving in to the stone. I, I looked I looked at reference images from the movie, and also some, some drawings and illustrations that people had done. So I grabbed some reference photos of that, and then tried to make it look as best as I could. Of course, I couldn't spend all day on this, so... I had to try to make it good with the time that I had. And then here I am drawing the elf language on the door. And then I used Blender's Rock Generator. Uh, it's an add-on built into Blender. It's the extra objects. If you turn on the extra objects uh, add-on, then there's a rock generator and it'll make a bunch of rocks for you. So I just did that. I actually have a tutorial on how to use that if you're interested. Uh, the tutorial is how to make, how to create realistic rocks using Blender's Rock Generator on my YouTube channel if you want to check that out. But yeah, then just uh, adding those rocks on the ground, trying to make a cool environment. And then uh, I also did, you can see right here, I added a displacement with just a noise texture to make the ground look really rough. And then at the very end here, I also did finish uh, sculpting Gandalf's hands. And there we go, so there is the final uh, sculpt, Day 5, Magic Gate. This was a, a pretty fun one. And I am a big Lord of the Rings fan, so it was pretty fun to make. Uh, so day six, the word was uncontrollable hair. So I started off just making a just a basic a male face, and I was pretty happy with how the face turned out. I was quite happy with that. Um, the hair, I wasn't too happy with it. Actually, what I did is I... Uh, sculpted the hair three times. This was actually the third attempt that you can see there. The other two times I just didn't like how it turned out. The first one I was thinking about making some kind of like spiky hair, uh, but it just didn't turn out. It turned out really bad. So then the second time I was just trying to make kind of some fluffy hair and oh yeah, the second time I tried making some hair that it kind of looked like an ice cream cone almost, like on his head. Like if you can imagine a big swirly bit of ice cream kind of swirling up, that's what I tried doing. And it didn't turn out very good, I didn't really like it. So uh, then the third attempt, I just decided to make this like quiff. So it turned out okay. So what I did is I added a new object, just added a new sphere, and then sculpted with that. And I kept that separate from the face object. Not too happy with this one. But I guess that's why we're doing a lot of them, so that we can uh, get it in a lot of practice, you know? And then adding in the eyes. I like adding in the eyes as separate objects instead of sculpting them. I just find that it's easier to use a, a sphere instead. So there we go, day six, uncontrollable hair. And here we are at day seven. So the word for day seven was luxurious garment. So I decided to make like this fat king. <laughs> and uh, I tried to make like, and the luxurious garment is the robe that he has. So just adding in basic objects, just doing basic modeling, just modeling all the pieces, also modeling a crown. I just started off with just, you know, basic box modeling, modeling these different objects, and then I went into sculpting after I finished the modeling. You can see mirroring the crown and just extruding out some arms. And then um, what I did is I merged those objects together, so like the body and the arms, merged them together. And then just making some basic hands. I didn't really actually sculpt the hands because uh, I didn't want to spend too long doing this because the majority of my work is making Blender tutorials right now because I'm trying to, you know, grow my channel and be able to do this for a living, so. 
I didn't want to spend too long, but you know, this still took, I think like two or three hours to make. Uh, adding in a, a mustache, a big mustache and a, and also adding in a, a big round nose and then adding in the eyes. For all the sculpts, I usually make the eyes the same. And then adding in the eyelids. For the first few years of uh, sculpting, I found the eyelids pretty hard to sculpt, but I think I've sculpted enough of them now, I don't find them that hard to sculpt. I find them pretty easy to sculpt now. Of course, I still have a lot to learn. They're not the most realistic, but I think they look pretty good. And then adding a belt for this fat king. And then here I am. Just I just started by box modeling that and then adding a subsurf. And then just just uh, sculpting the pants, not doing much, just kind of smoothing it out. And then sculpting the back of that uh, luxurious garment, that uh, cape, sort of like a, a king cape. Sort of like a cape or a cloak. And then duplicating the hand and sticking the like the staff on and then just adding a little bit of detail in the crown so there we go day seven luxurious garment i was pretty happy with this one and here we are at day eight so the word for day eight was relentless movement so at first i was thinking about maybe making someone chopping wood but then I thought, well, that would probably take too long, you know, because I was thinking about modeling this whole thing and then modeling someone and sculpting a whole character, but I thought that would probably take too long. So I just decided to do like a, a hatchet in a tree stump, and then I just I just added some firewood at the end there. So yeah, just starting with the tree stump, I just uh, yeah started sculpting that out. Just made the basic shape and then adding in little creases here and carving in so that I could make those roots of the tree and then you can see I'm just cutting in those circles around there kind of around where the tree trunk has been cut I was overall pretty happy with this one I did like how it turned out I think it really does have a nature look to it and it, I think it does really look like wood and then adding in just a simple ground here I just want something for the firewood to kind of be on, adding in some little holes, almost like, I don't know if there were some bugs who that were like, you know, living in the, the wood, because, you know, now the tree stump isn't really alive anymore, so maybe there were some bugs eating some holes in the wood or something. And then just, just uh, box modeling, a basic hatchet. I didn't do any sculpting on the hatchet because, yeah, there wasn't really anything to sculpt. I just box modeled it. Pretty simple. Just made a simple hatchet. And then I just stuck the hatchet into the wood, like someone was chopping wood and then they were they were on their lunch break and they just stuck it into the wood. <laughs> and then um, I also wanted just a little bit of fine detail all over the object, so I added the displacement modifier around that and just added in a very, very small kind of a bumpiness on the object. And then you can see that I duplicated the stump and then added a boolean and kind of cut some pieces out to make the firewood pieces. And then I placed the firewood on the ground and then just sculpted them to give them a nice wood texture. And there we go, there is the final sculpt. So day eight, relentless movement. And day nine, so the word for day nine was pointless tool. Um, so at first I was thinking about maybe making like a video game controller, because, <laughs> uh, I don't know, that, that that might get some gamers angry. I don't really play games that much because I'm, I'm too busy doing Blender, so I don't really have time to play video games. So I was like, oh, well, video games are a waste of time, so. But then I decided to do a Scarecrow instead. I don't know why, but it seems like in all the like the, the artwork of Scarecrows or in like books or movies or anything, it always seems like 
the scarecrows don't do a thing and like the the crows always just land on the scarecrows and they aren't scared of them at all. I have no idea if scarecrows actually work. Maybe they actually do work. But it doesn't seem to me like they would actually work because after a while of just sitting there, the crows would probably figure out that it wasn't a real person. And then trying to add all those patches, you know, I looked at reference images and a lot of them had like patches and, and they were usually a bit uh, old and torn. So I added creases in there and added, I actually added later on some little holes, like the jacket was kind of ripped. Yeah, there we go. Adding in those little holes there, just adding in some scratches and stuff and then modeling some buttons and put some buttons on the jacket of the scarecrow. And then I made some hay and I stuck that hay, like the filling of the scarecrow, you know, some hair and then also just coming out of the sides there. And then at the very end, I sculpted a very simple crow. So there we go, day nine, pointless tool. So that's gonna be it for this week of Sculpt January. So days one through nine. So I'm gonna be doing three more of these videos on my channel for week two, week three, and week four. And also, if you are doing Sculpt January, you can definitely let me know in the comments. And if you'd like to, you can also send me a link to your artwork, I'd love to check it out. And again, all of my Sculpt January sculpts are on my Sketchfab profile, so link will be in the description if you'd like to check them out. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.